Welcome to They Walk Among Us, the show that takes you inside the lives of regular people with extraordinary psychic gifts. Let's see what's in store for this week's show. This week, we'll explore the town of Lilydale. This small New York community has housed only mediums, psychics, and healers since the 1800s. Plus, get some words of wisdom from best-selling author Carolyn Mace. Our lives are a combination of choice and destiny. So we've got a lot to get to this week. We're going to start things off here in the Lincoln Park neighborhood of Chicago, where we found a woman who wears two hats. She's a CEO consultant and a business expert. Oh, and she's been able to see dead people since she was six. Let's see what it's like to spend a day in her shoes. Hi, how are you? Come on in. See you. See you. Watching Therese rally with her newly adopted daughter, she looks like your typical mom. Mama. That's my Barbara. It's called Mama, but you're close. Not only is she a CEO consultant to some of the biggest corporations in the country, but when she's not teaching at the University of Chicago or using her PhD in transformation, she's counseling people about their lives with a very different perspective. Sometimes I see um, what I'll call past lives. Therese has been able to read energy since she was a small child, but she didn't tell anyone for years for fear that she would be ridiculed. I'd always done it on the side. Maybe I've done reading since the late 80s or something. Um, but always on the side and always doing it, not telling people, and, and pretty secretive because uh, way back then, people were, you know, they would run screaming from the room if you said something like, you know, this is what I do. But if people sought me out, then I would do it for them. Uh, I didn't sort of go public until 98. Raised Catholic on the south side of Chicago, Therese still goes to church every week and keeps in touch with her large family. My parents were married for 50 years. Uh, as you can see, we're a pretty close family. We were always dressed like this, even at the zoo. It was amazing. I'm one of 11 children. Do any of your brothers and sisters like know about your gifts, or do you talk to any of them about it? They know about them. <laughs> I mean, they're not too impressed with me, uh, <laughs> as it should be. So Families always just knock you back down. They do. They do. Teresa's husband, Tom, is an engineer and was quite surprised when he found out about his wife's unique perspective after they started dating five years ago. Well, I don't think I really understood it completely when she was telling me that. But uh, as time has gone on, I've gotten to understand a lot better. Now he considers it par for the course when his wife happens to see spirits flying around the room. Uh, there's been times where it's come up that she's, she has seen some things and... Uh, you know, she shares it with me and we talk about it. Some high-powered CEOs seek out Teresa's guidance, but wouldn't talk to us about it on camera. Because I've been in business, I do have a lot of business leaders that come to me. Uh, I have a lot of entrepreneurs. I have a lot of women, uh, very powerful women that come in. And now I'm starting to get children who are gifted and sometimes labeled as learning disordered. And sometimes they're spiritually gifted. And they come to me either to have me explain to them about their gifts. Everybody is intuitive. It's like playing the piano. You know, even if you're tone deaf, you can learn chopsticks. But some people are tone deaf. And some people are born Mozart. So it's not the same. We're not equally gifted from the get-go, but we all have the opportunity to develop the gifts um, to the extent that we choose to. And I think if you have a gift, you have a responsibility to develop it. Right, Anna? She's developing her potty training skill now. And I think that's wonderful. I do. Oh, you peed on me, no. We decided we wanted Therese to read someone that she didn't know to sort of put her gifts to the test. The subject, our director Michael, an admitted pessimist who can't sit still. Um, I'm pretty much only doing this because you asked me to. I can only imagine what she's wearing. Michael has had a rocky relationship with his mom his whole life and harbors resentment over the fact that they just don't get along. Therese knows none of this. As far as being able to see or even feel other people's vibes and auras, it seems a little bit strange to me. I don't really believe in it too much. I'm not looking at any information that you don't want me to see. Uh, your brain is a, a tuning mechanism and it's tuning for a very particular frequency. Your name is a very particular frequency. No one else on the planet has your uh, particular frequency. When, when I ask you to say your name and then I look at you, it's like looking at an x-ray. It's like I just took another picture. And then we start to move things, all those things that you put in the way, and we say, okay, you, you and I agree that you want that out of the way, so I'll help you move that out of the way. If I have permission to read your energy, would you please say your full name three times? 
Uh, Michael Dennis Thielen. Michael Dennis Thielen. Michael Dennis Thielen. Just a second here. I ask for Michael's angels and guides to be with him and mine to be with me so that what comes through me is for his highest good and in line with his intention for this reading. I give thanks for these prayers already answered in Christ Buddha consciousness. Amen. I'm looking at a picture of um, a sort of restless child um, who can't s sit still, partly because the, the field is not stable, uh, the swaddling isn't there, but there's this incredible creative core that can't also sit still because it's just so creative. You have found a way to kind of channel uh, some of the discomfort into uh, something that becomes art. There's a way in which almost as an infant, it looks like um, an infant that wasn't swaddled, that's the image, so that the hands and feet are flailing and there's nobody holding it and wrapping it tightly and swaddling it. There's a sense that you sort of never had that. And so your whole uh, blueprint looks as though it, it just wants to know where the blanket is. I'm just going to put some healing into that place of the inner child that didn't uh, feel that uh, comfort. Uh, several images here, just a second, because I'm going to look at a past life here, so to speak, past life, so to speak here. If you were, um, if you were in, uh, if you were a martyr and you were going to die by lion uh, eating in, a, in an arena, your mother would have been the person that would have released the lion, okay? And, <laughs> sorry, but that's what it looks like, but I mean, she was just doing her job, okay? She didn't, it wasn't personal. Okay, it's not personal that she's releasing the line to eat you. It's just her job. So there's this sense from you like, hello, you know, like it'd be good for you to see that that's not a good idea. But she's just doing her job. So there's a way in which she's not um, personal enough with you to know, to get connected, to know what she's really doing in terms of the kind of quote unquote damage that could be ensuing from her actions. Okay, so I'm going to ask her to take all of her energies and cords out of your field and... And I ask her to move into her own field. Okay. Cool. It's a little bit much. <laughs> a little that bit more than you good. asked for. <laughs> that was awesome. So if you feel like you might need a spiritual tune-up, Therese could be your ticket. Even for a skeptic, a conversation with her leaves an impression. It's almost like maybe she's giving me a different perspective of how to look at my family. You think that some people are wired differently and that this woman is, might be one of them. I definitely think either that, that she's definitely wired to see these people, or she's completely nuts. Coming up, the true tale of the town that talks to the dead.